we're about to begin Streets of Shadows. First, we have to complete the setup by placing the units on the map. Starting units are placed in their respective headquarters. So the movie director starts with three units in their headquarters at Bercy. The chief of police has three regular and one elite unit at its headquarter at Ile de la Cité. Journalists have three regular units at their headquarters at Batignol. The cabaret Impresario starts with three units at its headquarters at Republique. And the fashion designer has three units at its headquarters at Montparnasse. We begin with the initiative phase. Normally, the faction with the most locations under its control has the initiative. However, at the beginning of the game, we determine who has the initiative randomly. So we will roll one die for each of the factions, and the high roller will have the initiative. And we have a six by the red player, which is the cabaret impresario. And we give the initiative marker to the cabaret impresario. And many of the actions in this turn will be initiated by that faction and then we will proceed in a clockwise direction. Next is the shadows phase. We draw the top card from the deck, which is deck A, and it's black market. And during plot resolution, each player will gain one franc for each force they have in a train station or market location and the allied liberation marker will not move in this turn. So let's mark both locations. Here's the market, which is in the Montmartre district and the train station located at Montparnasse. Next is the income phase where the players collect francs and collaborating players can trade francs and cards, but right now there's no collaborating players. There will be a chance for players to make alliances and collaborate with each other after the drawing of an air raid card. So now we provide to each of the factions the number of francs indicated here in the bottom left portion of the card. For example, as to the Cabaret Empresario, that faction receives four francs, and now it has a total of nine. And as we can see, we've added the corresponding number of francs to the other factions. Next is the recruit phase where players can recruit and place new units on the map. That's either in their respective headquarters or in landmark spaces. And the landmark spaces in the game again are Notre Dame, the Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe, and the Paris Opera. Cabaret Empresario starts. He can purchase regular units at a cost of two francs per unit. And he purchases one unit, which will be placed in the Cabaret Empresario's headquarter. And that unit is one space away from Montmartre, where the uh, Cabaret Empresario can occupy that market space in the uh, action phase. Cabaret Impresario also knows that uh, moving first is a big advantage, but uh, he has no unit that is two spaces away from the train station. And remember, in this game, whoever gets first to a location controls it, and any other player that wants to gain control has to attack the uh, player controlling that location. The exception are landmarks, like for example, Notre Dame, where all players can coexist and no battles can take place. So the Cabaret Impresario will purchase another unit, spending two francs, and places the recruited unit in the Eiffel Tower space, which is in the same district as the train station. Next to purchase new units is the Fashion Designer. Fashion Designer is keeping an eye on the Cabaret Impresario, and the Cabaret Impresario will only be able to move one unit into the train station, so it is conceivable that uh, the fashion designer may attack the Cabaret Impresario. However, in order to conduct an attack in this game, a player must have a 
suited card and there's no guarantee that uh, the card that a player will purchase especially in the first turn will be a suited card so the fashion designer may also want to concentrate in occupying other locations that bear uh, the same fashion designer symbol in order to control all three and gain complex dominance which will increase the fashion designer's income by one each turn. There is a fashion designer location here in Menil Montart, but it is too far away from uh, Montparnasse. So the fashion designer will also purchase two units, spending four francs, and placing the two units, one in Notre Dame, which is a landmark, and from there the unit can move to the fashion designer location in Menil Montar. And the second recruited unit is placed in the Arc de Triomphe, which is in the same district that is Passy as the other fashion designer location. The movie director will try to uh, gain control of the other movie director locations on the map and will also purchase two units. There's a movie director location at Batignol and in the adjacent opera district there is a landmark, the Paris Opera, so one unit goes there. There's another movie director location at Montparnasse, so the second recruited unit will appear at the Eiffel Tower. Next is the chief of police. Chief of police only has six francs, which is less than those of the movie director, the fashion designer, and the uh, cabaret impresario, so he's not gonna go wild on purchasing new units, so he will only purchase one new unit, and that unit will be placed in the Arc de Triomphe landmark, which is in Passy, which is a district where there's another chief of police location. The journalists are next and they will spend two francs to purchase one unit. Notice that the journalists start with four units in their headquarters at Batignol. There is a journalist location, which is in Republique, see there, which is two areas away from Batignol. So one of those units can reach that location. The other journalist location, however, is in the Latin Quarter, and that is three areas away from Batignol. So the journalist will place their recruited unit in Notre Dame, so that that unit can hopefully reach the journalist location in the Latin Quarter. Now we proceed to the bidding phase where players bid francs in order to purchase action cards. And the number of action cards that are auctioned each turn is equal to the number of players in the game. So here we're playing with five players. So we place five action cards in a row from left to right and we will be auctioning each card in succession starting with the leftmost card. Now, in a regular face-to-face -face game, the action cards remain face down, so players don't know what they're bidding for until they win the bid. There is, however, an exception. A player who, before the auction for the first card, plays this intelligence card may examine all action cards drawn for bids, and of course, that would allow the player to make better use of his francs and uh, bid strongly on cards that the player is interested in. So in a regular face-to-face -face game, the player with the initiative bids first, and then you proceed clockwise, and the next player either passes or the player bids a higher amount of francs. And you keep on going, either you pass or bid francs in order to lead the bid and eventually when all but one of the players has passed the auction is over and the player that uh, was winning the bid had or had the highest bid purchases the card now we are playing solitaire here so i will not be using that procedure as stated before i will be randomizing 
the specific bids that each of the factions will make. And I uh, made this uh, table here that shows you uh, on the uh, top row here the amount of available francs for a particular faction. So if a faction has six francs, we roll a die and that's the number of francs that that faction will bid. And we will roll for each one of those factions. And the faction with the highest bid wins the card. Now, if a faction bids an amount, let's say three, and the next faction also bids that amount, the faction that bid first will be carrying the day. So in order to uh, be winning the bid, a faction has to uh, obtain a number which is higher than the current winning bid. And also, there will be uh, at sometimes an adjustment. If a faction wins the bid by two or more francs compared to the second highest bid, then we will reduce the winning bid so that that particular bid wins by one franc. And there will be two circumstances where we will add one to the bid die roll. That will be when a faction plays an intelligence card, like the one we just showed, on one particular bid per bidding phase. Then we add one. And if a faction has no cards and we are about to auction the last card, we add one to the die roll of that faction. And one more thing, because the uh, bids in this particular solo game will be randomized and uh, players have no discretion in uh, increasing or reducing their bids, we will auction all cards face up. And now we will start by uh, announcing a bid for the first card. In a real game, of course, this card would be face down, but we know that it will be an influence card. And the Cabaret Impresario is the player that goes first because he has the initiative. The Cabaret Impresario has five available francs, so let's roll 1d6. And the roll is a five, so the Cabaret Impresario bids four francs. And we mark that with a die on top of uh, red cube. Next is the fashion designer. Fashion designer has six francs. We locate the six franc column. The die roll is a six. So the fashion designer bids five francs and is currently outbidding the cabaret impresario. And notice that under this solo uh, way of resolving this, the cabaret impresario doesn't have another chance. This is supposed to happen at the same time. Next is the movie director. Movie director has five francs and the most you can roll with five francs is a five. The roll is a four, so the movie director bid four francs. The chief of police has four francs. He rolled a five, that results in three francs. And now the journalists have four francs. They rolled a three, which produces a bid of two. So now when we check all bids, the highest bidder is the fashion designer. So we pay off the winning bid, which is five francs, and we award the card to the fashion designer. And the winner of the bid starts the next bid. The next bid is for an influence card. I will roll off camera and reveal the number of francs that each of the factions bids. Here we see the results of the bidding for the second card and the journalists win this bid with three francs. So we deduct three francs and award the card. The next card to be auctioned is the usual suspects card. In this game, in order for you to attack another player's units, you have to play a suited card. And this particular card allows you uh, to serve as any kind of suited card with a conflict value of zero. So let's take a look at the bids for this card. For this card, the winning bidder is the movie director with four francs. So we pay the four francs. The movie director has one franc left. The 
Fourth card to be action is a treachery card with a value of one if used in combat. Now we take a look at the bids for this card. And here the uh, chief of police carries the day bidding two francs. Later the cabaret impresario also bid two, but he had to bid at least one more to win the bid. So the chief of police wins the card. And the chief of police still has two francs. Now we're going to auction the last card of this bidding phase. And as you can see, the only player that has not won a card during this bidding phase is the Cabaret Impresario. So uh, his die roll will have a plus one die roll modifier. Cabaret Impresario has five francs left compared to the Chief of Police with two and the other factions with one. The Cabaret Impresario rolled a four modified to a five and therefore his bid is four francs and that bid carries the day. Now here is where a uh, modification takes place. Uh, if the winning bid wins by two or more francs, we reduce the winning bid so that it wins by one. So the Cabaret Impresario will only actually bid two francs and still wins the bid. After the bid, Cabaret Impresario still has three francs left. And that concludes the bidding phase. In the next turns, I will just give you the results of the bidding phase, but this is the procedure that I will be following. Next is the player turn phase. Each player, is starting with the initiative player and continuing clockwise, can play action cards, then move, and then engage in conflict. So we begin with the player with the initiative, the Cabaret Impresario. And as the first player to move, the Cabaret Impresario wants to take advantage of the Black Market Shadows card. He wants to have uh, units in either the train station or the market location. And whoever gets there first forces any other player who wants to occupy that location to attack the first player. So the Cabaret Impresario will move one of his units, one district, into Montmartre, into the market location. And he will also move one of his units in the Eiffel Tower to the train station located within the same district, that's Montparnasse. Of course, the Cabaret Impresario wants to occupy the locations that have uh, the likeness of their faction. And there's one at La Villette. So another of his units moves one district into the cabaret location there. And there's one more location that has the cabaret symbol. And you see it down here in Bercy. And Cabaret Impresario moves two districts to occupy that location. So the Cabaret Impresario has been able to seize all three locations with the Cabaret symbol. That means that he, unless uh, one of those spaces is taken by an enemy faction, will have complex dominance and will receive one additional franc per turn. And note that for movement purposes, it is important to note that units must stop in any district where an opposing faction has units either at large in the district or in any location. So for example, the Cabaret Impresario could not move through Ile de la Cité because there, there are units from the chief of police, the fashion designer, and the journalist. But Cabaret Impresario moved through Bastille and into Mercy where it has to stop, but it stopped at the Cabaret location. So that was a pretty productive turn for the Cabaret Impresario. Next is the Fashion Designer. The Fashion Designer has an influence card which can be played for battle to add three points or it can be played to place a friendly token in any friendly headquarter 
neutral space or space with a friendly token or empty space. Fashion designer wants to uh, control all fashion designer locations. So fashion designer will move his unit in Notre Dame through Bastille, which is empty, and into Menil Montart, specifically in the fashion designer location there. Similarly, in the Passy district, fashion designer moves the unit from the Arc de Triomphe into the fashion designer location in that district. Fashion designer wants to take control of other locations that can uh, somehow impede movement of units from other factions. So another fashion designer unit will move from its headquarters at Montparnasse and through Invalide and will reach champs Elysees, specifically in the Louvre location. And finally, one unit from its headquarters at Montparnasse will move through Invalide and will reach Ile de la Cité, where it has to stop, but it has to stop anyway, because they can only move two districts, and stops at Notre Dame. Next is the movie director. He has the usual suspects. This allows the movie director to play the card as if it was a suited card, and uh, with a conflict value of zero, but it could be played as any suited card. So could be played as a treachery, influence, intelligence, or raid card. The movie director has three of its four units in its home base at Bercy. So one of the movie director's units moves through the Latin Quarter and into Montparnasse where it has to stop, and it will stop here at the movie director location there. Another of the movie director's units will move from the Paris Opera into the Batignon district, specifically at the movie director location there. So now the movie director has complex dominance. Not wanting to leave its headquarters with uh, no units, the movie director will move one additional unit and it will move into the Bastille district, specifically here, into the Hotel Alsace. Next, the chief of police. He has a treachery card that allows him to uh, pick an action card from an opponent, but it has also a value of one in combat, so for now, the card won't be played. Chief of police also wants to uh, obtain complex dominance. He has uh, three of his four units at his headquarters at Ile de la Cité. The fourth unit is at the Arc de Triomphe, so he can move that unit within that district, so it moves to the Chief of Police location there. The other Chief of Police location is here at Tuileries, so he will move one of his units into that location. Still, the Chief of Police has three units in his headquarters. He will take the elite unit, which can move three districts, and that unit will move through Tuileries and into the Opera District to remain at the Paris Opera. And finally, Chief of Police will move one of his units into Republique, where that unit must stop, but it will stop at the journalist location there. And now it's the journalist's turn, and he also has an influence card, and moving last has its disadvantages because now there's more units on the map. So the journalist can move his unit at Notre Dame to an adjacent district like Republic, but has to stop there and has to remain at large and that would force the journalist to use that unit to attack and would probably uh, attack the uh, chief of police there and to attack the journalist will have to play a suited card. And that's what the journalist will do. So we move the journalist unit into Republic, where it remains for now at large. Here we see the other journalist units that start at their headquarters at Batignol. Notice that they cannot come 
to join in the attack at Republique because they would have to move through uh, Montmartre and Montmartre has a red unit there so they would have to stop there. They would not make it to Republique so the unit at large there is on its own in that attack. The journalists will move some of their units from their headquarters. One will move into the Passy district to the Arc de Triomphe. Another of the journalist units will move into the Opera District at the Paris Opera where it can coexist with the Chief of Police's elite unit there. It's always good to have a unit in a district that has a metro station. So one of the two units in its headquarters will move to Montmartre and will remain at the artist quarter location there. And now the journalist announces that uh, he will be attacking the chief of police at the journalist location at the Republique. And the journalist plays one card face down. Now the chief of police can add one card to his defense, one suited card, and he has this treachery card. Now for purposes of this solo play, the chief of police decides not to play any card in this combat situation. So we flip the journalist card, and the journalists have a total strength of three, two for the influence card, and one for the unit that attacked and of course the chief of police has a strength of one so the chief of police is defeated and we eliminate the chief of police cube and the journalist occupy the attacked location and that's the end of the player turn phase now we go to the plot and turn resolution phase and we resolve the plot from the shadows card that is currently in effect so this means that each player will gain one franc for each of their units that they have in the train station or market location. Cabaret Impresario has one unit in the train station, so that's one franc, and another unit in the market location. So we add two francs to the Cabaret Impresario's total. Now we adjust the liberation track, but this specific shadows card indicates that the marker does not advance. So that's the end of this first turn and we saw that all of the factions except the journalist were able to achieve complex dominance. So each of those factions during the upcoming income phase will receive one more franc. And that is bad news for the journalist because the journalist receives the lowest amount of francs in the game per turn, just two. So. We will continue with turns two and three in the next episode of Streets of Shadows. And this is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.